Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias of Mike. Oh, God, we are we we are back in Detroit, Michigan, you guys. This is this is WrestleMania all grown up. And you'd know that from the ooh, seemingly endless amount of promos they do relating to that fact, uh, casting a lot of little kids cosplaying as wrestlers. It's a little weird. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm not a big fan of this WrestleMania. Really not. I mean, there's some bright spots on it, but ooh, overall, it's it's kind of a shit show. Uh, but let's let's start off as we normally do. I'm going to talk about the dark match real quick first. It is not an interpromotional battle royal, namely because this is the first WrestleMania with Raw, SmackDown, and ECW. That's right. We got three brands now, kids. So, um, Instead, the dark match was a lumberjack match. Now, I do not remember the story for this at all. But apparently, at one time, Carlito was the protege of Ric Flair. I don't recall that. Ever. I don't know how long it lasted. But it was Ric Flair and Carlito against Gregory Helms and Chavo Guerrero in a lumberjack match. Now, because I know you guys like lists of the random people that existed around this time, here's who all the Lumberjacks were. And, oh, this is a who's who of who's who. Viscera, Shad and JTG, Chris Master, Shelton Benjamin, Charlie Haas, Robbie McAllister, Rory McAllister, the, the Highlanders. Do you remember the Highlanders? I don't remember the Highlanders. I'm Robbie! I don't remember the Highlanders. Uh, super crazy, Val Venus, Johnny Nitro, Jim Hacksaw, Jim Duggan. Okay, Eugene, Lance Cade, Trevor Murdoch, and Kenny Dykstra. Those are for the raw guys. You had Davari, Shannon Moore, Sylvain Grenier, Deuce and Domino, <laughs> Paul London, Brian Kendrick. Hey, there, there's a boy, The Miz. Nice to see The Miz. That's that's his first WrestleMania appearance, probably. Uh, Big Vito, Sky Duhati, William Regal, uh, Dave Taylor. Wow, I forgot they employed him. Jimmy Wang Yang, Jamie Noble, and Funaki from SmackDown. And from ECW, you have Balls, Stevie, Lil Guido, Hardcore Holly, and Snitsky. Whew. Yeah, uh, they, they just showed a little bit, but Ric Flair and Carlito won. Can you believe Ric Flair was on the dark match of a WrestleMania, you guys? Ric Flair. Do you know what he's going to be doing next year at WrestleMania? Because that's the only thing I remember from that show. Whew. That that might be the biggest jump. Like ever in a like there are people who've gone from main events to to show openers, from show openers to main events. Dark match to retirement match. That's a jump. That's a jump. Um, but anyway, let's get into the actual card proper. Uh only eight matches on this show. The May event is really long. Um, first, we have the sec uh, the third annual, excuse me, Money in the Bank ladder match. And this one has the WrestleMania debut of CM Punk. By the way, CM Punk technically also makes history by being the first ECW competitor to compete at WrestleMania. There will be more later, but kind of a cool kind of a cool distinction that we don't like hear about a lot, basically because a lot of people don't count ECW on sci-fi as ECW. But go figure. Uh, but CM Punk, Randy Orton, Finley, Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy, returning to singles action, Jeff Hardy. Hmm, I wonder where he was this whole time. Ah, it probably doesn't matter. Uh, King Booker, Edge, and Mr. Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a really interesting match. Um, Edge actually gets taken out by the Hardys about halfway through. Uh, so Edge loses his undefeated streak at WrestleMania, regardless of what the what I think they say later. But um, but yeah, Edge was undefeated at this point. Um, it's it's an interesting match. Uh, you know the the see, that's the thing about this WrestleMania. There's not a lot to gleam from it. The matches were all very good. There's only like one or two standouts, and that's. Like, I mean, this this seems like a normal ladder match. There's nothing, like, the only really crazy thing that I can recall from this ladder match, and I just watched it, is Mr. Kennedy giving Hornswoggle the um, 
the Green Bay plunge off a ladder. This is this is the one that had Little Bastard, aka Hornswoggle. Uh, it had a tiny ladder that Booker T did a bit with. Uh, but yeah, it, I mean, it was fine. It, it like I said, this is a weird WrestleMania, and I think it's because of the Battle of the Billionaires. I think that has a lot to do with it because they're also this is also the first time they're working with three brands, so you don't have a lot of title matches. You don't have a lot of individual feuds. There's not a lot of those things on this WrestleMania. It might not be that might be why I didn't enjoy it so much. But um, Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy, Kennedy wins the Money in the Bank. Now, if you're thinking to yourself in the history of Money in the Banks, you know everyone who's cashed in Money in the Bank has won the championship. To everyone's knowledge, Mr. Kennedy has never been a WWE or World Champion. That's because I believe he got either injured. During this match, or shortly thereafter, or popped with steroids or something like that, and he ha- he uh, lost the briefcase man match to Edge, and Edge cashed in again and won again. Uh, but yeah, so uh, too bad for Mister Kennedy. That's a shame because he was good once upon a time. He was. I'm not sure what happened TNA, but yeah, he was good once upon a time. Uh, so the next match. I know the Rizzle loved this. The debut, the WrestleMania debut of the Great Kali. And he was going up against Kane. Uh, now, again, this is when Ceno Evil came out. And at one point, Kane just breaks out the, the giant hook from the movie. Uh, yeah, very violent. Uh, nothing happens. I think it's just like a chain shot to the balls. But Kali gets the win here. It, I mean, it's a Great Kali match. Unless he's fighting John Cena or locked inside a Punjabi prison, you're not gonna remember much of it. It's only it's only like five minutes long anyway. But uh, the next match we got um, for the United States Championship, MVP is trying to get the belt away from Chris Benoit. Yeah, um, MVP gets a cool entrance. He uh, busts through a little like um, like an MVP logo and has a whole bunch of cheerleaders. Very cool. This is before he got his inflatable entrance. But um and Chris and like this is MVP he he's he's still saying that he has the biggest contract of all time he's calling Chris Benoit boring all that stuff honestly it's a well wrestled match but it seems like it would have been the mid card of a regular SmackDown show and Chris Benoit gets the win like there's no title change you know I. Again, like I said, this WrestleMania is incredibly bland. There's like no heart to it, no nothing. Like I don't know. There's just a, except for this match. I'm I'm gonna give heaps of praise for this match. Batista as the world champion defending his belt against the Undertaker. Quick, guess who wins? Kidding. Uh, of course the Undertaker wins. But damn, this is the show stealer of WrestleMania 23. Easily, by far, hands down. Um, if you've heard interviews like from Batista, from Taker after this, they were both pissed that they weren't the main event of this year. They're they're pissed that they're essentially the third match, like the third highly touted match on the card between uh Cena and Shawn Michaels in the Battle of the Billionaires. And Batista and Taker tore it up man oh this is fun this is a really really good match it's about 15 minutes long so good length for batista usually batista once he goes over 20 that's when it starts to get a little bit dicey but a 15 minute match perfect even keel length for batista and ah they just have a lot of fun batista does a wicked running power slam through the announce table really really good this match must see must see, absolutely must see. Best match on the card by far. Uh, but yeah, t- so Taker wins and he wins the world title at WrestleMania. I think, not positive, but I think Taker is the first guy to win both the WWE Championship and the World Championship at WrestleMania. I think I'd have to do a little bit of remembering, but um, because I know Cena retains a lot, but he didn't. He only won one belt there. At least for now, I'm sure he wins it again at some point down the line. But uh, yeah, I think like unless you 
if you don't count the undisputed championship, which you know not a lot of people count as heavyweight and world. But yeah, I think Taker's the first guy to win both of those single titles at WrestleMania. But uh, moving along, we get kind of a cool match. Um, kind of shows a lot of the problems with ECW <laughs> on Sci-Fi, but it's an eight-man tag. It's uh the new breed of Elijah Burke, Marcus Corvon, Matt Stryker, and Kevin Thorne with Ariel. Going up against the ECW originals, RVD, Tommy Dreamer, Sabu, and Sandman. Honestly, this is just kind of cool to see. Because I mean the weird thing is, like they all and all the ECW originals enter through the crowd. RVD's wrestled at WrestleMania before, so he knows he knows the story with this. But you, if you watch this match, just look at the joy on Tommy Dreamer's face. Like Sabu and Sam, man, they don't show much emotion. But Tommy Dreamer, man, uh, when the ECW originals get the win, Dreamer just looks so happy. He just he looks like it, it's it's a really cool moment. It's one of those moments that's really understated. They don't harp on it, but just look at the joy in Tommy Dreamer's face when he gets his hand raised at WrestleMania. Very, very cool. Uh, definitely watch it. I mean, if, if you've never seen a lot of the new breed guys, which I can't blame you considering two of them are commentators now and two of them, as far as I know, have vanished from the face of the earth, wrestling-wise. Yeah. Uh, kind of interesting that two of, these, two of these guys in the new breed are commentators. I just find that funny. Um, but before we get into... Uh, the Battle of the Billionaires. Let's talk a little bit about the backstage segments. Uh, there's a whole backstage segment with um, with Crime Time and Eugene, who has his head shaved. I forget the reason. I assume it was by Vince McMahon, like some sort of build for the Battle of the Billionaires. And Crime Time's trying to cheer up Eugene by having Eugene dance with Extreme Expose, which is Kelly Kelly, Brooke, and Layla. <laughs> If you remember Extreme Expose, oh, geez. ECW on Sci-Fi was a weird show, you guys. It was a weird show. Um, but then uh, Mula and Mae Young are in the same outfits, so they all start dancing. Then everyone comes in. All the misfits and freaks come in. Got um, Sergeant Slaughter coming in. Got the American Dream, Dust the Road dancing. Um, got a lot of guys dancing. And this all leads to a segment they did a lot this year but ron segment ron simmons comes in he just looks around at all the crazy people they stop being crazy and he just goes damn that's basically it that's the whole segment of that um but uh if you're a political fan i'm sure you've probably seen this segment once or twice uh donald trump is on the phone backstage and he's interrupted by the boogeyman and donald trump completely no sells the boogeyman donald trump completely no sells Everything at this WrestleMania, like he's honestly the worst WrestleMania celebrity. And I know I said that was the Miller Cat Fight Girls. I'm revising my opinion. Donald Trump is the worst WrestleMania celebrity. I forgot how terrible he was at this WrestleMania. In fact, I didn't even mention when he was at WrestleMania 20. You know why? Because fuck it. That's why. Um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, Boogeyman, like, and Little Boogeyman is there too, which is funny because I completely forgot about little, Mini Boogeyman. Uh, but before and before we get to the Battle of Billionaires, let's talk about the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame class for this year, ooh, it's a good one, guys. It's a really good one. I might actually watch this one again because there's a lot of speeches I remember being really, really good. First, we got the headliner, the American Dream, the Throve, baby, inducted by his sons, Cody and Dustin. Very cool. Um, not gonna cry. I teared up a little bit, you know, uh, given Dusty's recent passing. But yeah, uh, really, really cool. Uh, Mr. Perfect was inducted this year by Wade Boggs. Very cool. Uh, his wife accepted for him posthumously. His wife just, from what I remember, his wife gave an awesome speech about Kerr Henning. And God, I miss that man. Love Kerr Henning. Uh, but Jerry Lawler was inducted by William Shatner. Terry Lawler treated as a stand-up. It's fine. Nick Bockwinkle was inducted by Bobby Heenan. Uh, Mr. Fuji was inducted by The Rock Don Morocco. The Sheik, the original Sheik, was inducted by RVD and Sabu, which is awesome. And um, 
good old JR was inducted by Stone Cold Steve Austin, as 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 one would expect. All right, uh, so boy, let's get into the shit show. Ballet of the Billionaires, hair versus hair. Stone Cold Steve Austin is a special guest referee. Bobby Lashley is in Donald Trump's corner. Umaga is in Vince McMahon's corner. A lot of these things are really ironic considering the current state of things. Uh, but uh, it's it's a crazy it's a crazy match. Like um, there's a Umaga assaults Austin a bunch of times. Shane McMahon comes out. Shane hits a coast to coast on Lashley. Shane pulls out a referee shirt. Austin attacks Shane. Austin attacks Umaga. Vince McMahon gets clotheslined by Donald Trump. Uh, the barber chair has its own entrance theme. I'm not joking about that. It's a weird match. You guys know what happens. Obviously, Donald Trump didn't get his head shaved because that would be amazing. No, Vince got his head shaved because, of course, Bobby Lashley beat Umaga with a spear and like a lot of help. Um, and then there's about a 20-minute segment of Vince getting his head shaved. And then Donald Trump proceeds to take the worst stunner of all time from Austin. That's it. I don't really feel like talking about that one anymore because I'm just going to get angry and political, and that's not what this show is for. This show is for enjoying WrestleManias. Yeah! But the match is okay. Like, I think if it was just Bobby Lashley versus Umaga, I would have liked it a lot more. So I remember they had some good matches on ECW. They had some really fun matches on ECW, but this one had way too many cooks in, too many cooks in the kitchen for this one. Uh, speaking of too many cooks in the kitchen, this next match is for the women's championship. As we're back to the standard of a women's match being the buffer between the main and the semi-main event. But I'm okay with this one being a buffer because it did not amount to that much. It's Molina going up against yet another Playboy cover girl, Ashley Massaro, in a Lumberjill match. Now, um, I'm going to name who the Lumberjills were because why not? You have Mickey James, Layla, Jillian, Candice Michelle, Kelly Kelly, Trinity, Tori Wilson, Brooke, Crystal, Michelle McCool, Maria, and Victoria. So, yeah, um, basically everyone gets on the roster. But Molina beats Ashley really quickly. Ashley, I liked Ashley back in the day. She was not a good wrestler, but, you know, she was a, she was a good personality, I guess. But, yeah, this is a super quick match. Uh, yeah, Molina retains. Because th this is this is a this is a bad period for the women's division. Because at this point, I'm pretty sure Trish had left, Lita had left, um, Mickey James was, Mickey James is probably about to be called Piggy James, sometime later this year, and that's just entirely unfortunate. And it's just a lot of a lot of bad juju for the women's division. I'm not looking forward to the to the next coming up upcoming WrestleMania women's matches. So let's get into the main event uh, for the WWE Championship. Guys, this match is almost a half hour. It's it's a slog. I mean, it's it's a good match. It's John Cena, WWE Champion, defending against, against Shawn Michaels. It's a good match, but it probably could have been cut down by 10 or 15 minutes. It would have been even better. Um, the The finish really picks up. Like, the last five minutes or so really picks up, but... Oh, there! It's it's slow paced. It's slow paced. If they build this as an if that like a half hour Iron Man match, I would have been much more okay with it. But there's just a lot of like slow plotting work and stuff like that. There's a few high spots in the middle there, but and the weird thing about this is John Cena and Shawn Michaels are the Raw Tag Team Champions. Which take a drink every time they mention that. Actually, don't do that because you'll get alcohol poisoning because they mention it a lot. Uh, but yeah, this, this WrestleMania only have four title matches on it. Four title matches, so not 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 the best WrestleMania in the world, nearly not. And Cena Cena gets the win via the STFU. Uh, he made Sean tap out, which I mean. And by the way, if you're keeping count, this is now four title matches in a row for John Cena. I forget who he faces at WrestleMania 24. I honestly do. Like I said. These these mid mid twenties WrestleMania is kind of blurred together for me. There's like maybe one standout match I remember at each of them. Like obviously twenty five I know is Taker and Michaels, twenty six Taker and Michaels, twenty seven 
Take her Triple H. 28. Take her Triple H. 29. I was at that one, so I know a lot more about it. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, a lot of middling matches, and I guess we'll see how they go. But, um, but if you guys have any questions about uh, WrestleMania 23, if you want to bash Donald Trump, if you want to praise Donald Trump, please don't do either of that here unless it's about wrestling. Uh, <laughs> hit me up. I'm just kidding. Hit me up at Mad Mike 4883 on the Twitter machine. Leave some comments in the YouTube. Hit us up on Facebook, on, on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Hit up the hashtag MM. And uh, we'll be back in Orlando for Ric Flair's retirement match from WWE uh, at WrestleMania 24. And this has been uh, 32 Manias with Mike.